Today we're trying out Pokemon Myth, a new completed fan game that has recently been put out and features a ton of really cool stuff like their very own regional forms of already existing Pokemon and on top of that some very well designed Fakemon and every single type of evolution is now in the game as well. So there's now 18 of them. And if that wasn't enough, they also have their very own custom mega evolutions that transcend even God itself. On top of that, they have a very good original storyline and a new region for you to explore with evil teams that you've never seen before and even a new gimmick. I want to be showing off as many new custom forms and Pokemon as possible, so that's the only thing I'm going to be able to use. So join me in my journey through the beautiful fan game that is Pokemon Myth. We start off our journey by looking at the weather, and it's not looking great. Climate change is ruining the region with very high temperatures and heat waves, which are making a lot of people concerned about the environment and all of the Pokemon living here. I then decide to check out the menus, and there is a ton of great stuff here like quests, which you can complete to get some rewards, so if you're a completionist, this might be something for you to look into. You're also able to access your PC from anywhere you like, and you're always able to check the level cap you're at at the moment. We go downstairs and talk to our mother, who is also concerned about everything that's happening with the environment, because we just moved here. But she isn't going to worry about it too much, and even gives me an EV, since our dream is to be a professional Pokemon trainer. Personally, I can't wait to see what this EV turns into. She tells me to go to the professor to meet up with him and his son, which is the same age as mine. So maybe we could end up being friends. We head outside our house and end up in Kurmine Village, which seems to be located in a farmland. And I absolutely love the graphics of this game. They are so iconic and fit really well with the theme of this game. We run into a trainer with a rufflet who apologizes for his Pokemon harassing us. We quickly learn that his name is Marcus and he's the son of the professor. He was supposed to check up on me because we just moved into town like I said earlier, but he totally forgot about it. But he does want to see how strong we are, so he challenges me to a battle. And if we manage to win, he's going to convince his dad to give me a Pokedex. There also seems to be an abundance of new moves, because I've never seen any of the moves of my Eevee before. And its new move, Genetical Pulse, actually changes depending on which evolution it evolves into. So if it turns into a Flareon, it will be a Fire-type move. Anyway, we take out his Vulpix and then his Rufflet with Genetical Pulses and snowballs and quickly end off the battle. We then proceed to go to the lab together with him and meet up with his dad, Professor Bree. He tells me that we should go and travel the entire region, get every single gym badge, and try to study every species of Pokemon the region has to offer. He also tells me that if I run into a girl called Vanilla, I have to say hi to her because she turns out to be the champion of this region, and he was the one that gave her her first Pokemon. Also, an Eevee. He gives me some Pokeballs and the XP all and tells me to go and give them to Marcus because he just rushed off without even getting them. On our very first round, we run into our very first Fakemon, Swove, a very majestic duck, so I named him Elvis Duck. Hopefully, he'll be jamming out for us. You can also check every route's encounter, so if you're looking for something specific, you don't have to open up the Pokedex anymore, although I do prefer Radical Red's Dexnav. We ran into a guy that was moving his mill tanks, and I don't think he realizes that one of them is a shiny. I wish I could steal it, although I probably couldn't even use it because it's not a new Pokemon. We meet up with Marcus in front of a sewer system, and after giving him the items, he heads into the sewers and he asks me to go with him. Down here, he manages to find a shiny Zubat and runs after it, and ultimately also ends up capturing it, which is something you definitely don't see a lot in mainline Pokemon games, trainers having shiny Pokemon, so this is a very cool addition, as he'll be keeping it throughout his entire journey and you get to see it multiple times. We say our goodbyes and head back outside to capture a regional form of Pidgey and Electric Flying type. And I really like this thing's design, it reminds me of the God of Thunder. I get beat up by a weird looking water type Drowsy and then I run into a Hissierite, a little fire type snake that I immediately add to my team. And this thing turns into one of the best Fakemon I've ever seen. You're just going to have to wait until it evolves. We reach Eclipse Town shortly after and meet up with Marcus again, who says that the first gym leader is located in this town is a fire type user, and on top of that there is also a secret cave somewhere around here with some really cool Pokemon in it, so we'll have to check that out as well. I also end up buying some leftovers, Focus Ashes and Citrus Berries from a nearby shop, and another shop owner called The Swipers stole my money. Scams these days are everywhere. 
even in Pokemon games. We stumble upon the cave and run into Marcus. He gives me the HM for Flash, but in return he wants a Pokemon battle, and he's definitely strengthened his team quite a bit. But Judge Bird laid down the wrath on his shiny Zubat with Thundershock, while my Fire Snake put his Cocoling on fire, and Eevee finished off the last two Vulpix and Rufflet with Genetic Pulse and Quick Attack. We then enter the cave together and find the evil team, and they're called Team Astra. And their notable features are singing? And even though they also have some great puns, I do decide to take both of them out, but since they're just regular grunts, we get through them very quickly and enter the end of the cave. Here we realize that they were after an old relic called the Ruined Crown. So me and Marcus decide to take it with us and take it to the local library so it can be safely stored over there. We explain everything that happened to the guy that's working there, but he's seems to never have heard of a thing called the Ruined Crown, however, he does want to buy it off of us for a good price, so I guess you could call us real businessmen. He also goes on to explain that Team Astra has been trying to steal stuff from the library for a long time now, and that their leader is actually the former champion of the Serene region, but he was removed from being champion because, as it turns out, he was stealing Pokemon from other people. That's why he created this evil team, so we're definitely going to be on the lookout for him, but first we're going to take on our very first gym leader. Inside the gym, however, there is a way to encounter Pokemon by talking to bookcases. You have to defeat them in order to progress, and one of those Pokemon was a regional form of Mareep, a fire dark type that looks like it comes straight from hell. So I added it to the team and went to challenge Kilo, the first gym leader. It's not that hard for me to win the first battle as Eevee takes out Caitlyn. His second Pokemon, Torkoal, decides to commit explosions, so that makes that easy too. And his last Pokemon is a Growlithe, which literally can cannot touch my Mareep, so the first gym badge is ours already. Since the level cap has now increased, we can evolve our little snake in Bigger Snake, and Demon Sheep now has a skull on its body. I also ran into this weird looking Squirrel that I honestly never saw again and its evolutions were nowhere to be found. Shortly after we run into Team Astra again, and this time they're stealing somebody's notes. So she asks me to help her out and beat these two up. Once we were down laying our wrath upon them, scaring them off, and this makes this girl very happy, but she seems to work for Infusion Incorporated, which I guess we'll learn more about later on. We go our separate ways and end up in Via Lodge Town. But upon arriving here, we see two admins from Team Astra, Spectral and Pixie. They're looking around for a very strong Ice Beam team to make Team Astra more powerful. While they were talking, they also noticed that we just came into town, but they don't have time to deal with us, so they send ninjas our way instead. We make very quick work of them, and then we go around checking out the town, and the first thing I found was this girl that decided to give me a Slinky as a gift Pokemon, a pure water type that will eventually evolve in a water dragon, which is super overpowered if you didn't know that already. I mean, just take a look at how good Kingdra is. Another thing I found in the town was a girl named Ivy. She's here standing next to an old entrance of a mine where they used to search for special gems that have the qualities of every single Pokemon type. These gems are used for infusion, which is this Pokemon game's gimmick. But how does it work? Well, you can give one of these gems to your Pokemon, and if you, for example, give it a Fire-type gem, those moves will do 1.5 times more damage. And it also stacks with stabs, so you can definitely hit very hard if you utilize it right. She wants to explain more about it, so she takes me to her local lab, where she explains that she and her family lead an organization known as Team Rose. She introduces me to her father, which is a little bit too quick in my opinion. He wants to give me the power of infusion, but only if I manage to beat him in a Pokemon battle. Kobe, who's now a fire steel type, smashes his entire team into the ground with steel and fire type moves. With the battle over, they decide to help me out and give me the infusion power, and then we all go our separate ways. I decide to battle a couple more trainers and evolve Elvis Duck into something even more majestic, but I also run into the professor again, and he seems to be up to something very suspicious. Looking at the machines of Infusion Incorporated and saying that they could drill through the toughest stone. He also asks me if I've ever heard of Team Corrupt, because they want to get rid of all the bad climate and weather disasters that have been torturing the region. The professor himself is actually a big fan of Team Corrupt, because he shares all of their ideals. That's when he also gets a call and has to leave, so from here on out we go our separate ways, but I'm definitely on my toes around 
the professor from now on. I quickly evolve my Pidgey and Water Snake, and while I'm a big fan of Pidgeotto, I think the Water Snake looks a little bit off. Anyway, just before leaving town, Ivy wants a battle with me with her new infusion Pokemon. So we gladly accept that we're going to crush those infusion Pokemon with our regular ones, no problem. Pidgeotto kills Arkin and Eevee, while Snickers is able to take out the last Pokemon, Shinx, without any issues along the way. Except for Fluffy getting stomped, but that's about it. She decides to also go on a gym challenge, so maybe we'll run into her a couple more times along our journey. Before leaving town, I make a quick stop at the local restaurant and beat up a couple of fridges and take all of the resources out of them. On a serious note though, I think it's really cool that you can defeat Rodon fridge forms and get some very useful items out of them. On the next round, we run into Marcus again, and they have stolen his Zubat and ran into the cold storage. And we can't just leave a friend in the dust, so we're going to have to help him. But first, some more important things, grinding up our Pokemon and catching a couple of new ones. First off, I get to see my very first new evolution, and that's the bug one called Scorpion. I don't think the name can be any better, and the design is top tier as well. Let me know in the comments down below if Game Freak would ever make a new evolution, which one should they make? Personally, I think Bug looks really cool already, but Steel could also be top tier. And straight after, I ran into my very first shiny Pokemon, Dust Hawks. I don't know what it is with me and finding Whirlpool's evolutionary line shinies, but I seem to do so every other video. We won't be able to use this thing in battle, but I will use it as a subscribe point. You get 3 seconds to subscribe right now. 3, 2, 1, okay, back to the video. And if this shiny Dustox isn't enough, the straight up first encounter after this Dustox was another shiny, Miss Drevis. I know this fan game has boosted shiny odds, but I never expected to run into back to back shinies. That's actually insane. But now it's time to head to the cold storage. Here we see Marcus getting harassed by Team Corrupt, and even though they're all for climate change, which is what their big boss wants, they aren't here for that, because when their admin Monica is in charge, they don't think about climate change at all, they just think about stealing other people's Pokemon. So me and Marcus team up to defeat the Grunts together, and once they're defeated, they flee to the back of the storage to tell everything to their admin Monica. But since we still need to get Marcus a shiny Zubat back, we decide to follow them. In a cooling container, at the end of the storage, we see that they're all hurtled up together, which reminds me a little bit of Black and White, where Team Plasma is also stuck in the cold storage. Anyway, me and Marcus take on Monica to try and get his Pokemon back, and the only notable were two new forms of Scyther and Zorua, who both look absolutely astonishing. They both seem to be fire types as well, so if I run into any of them in the wild, I'll be capturing them. Defeating Monica was an easy feat, and once we've driven them out of the cold storage, Marcus thanks us by giving us a special toxic infused gem which will power up my Pokemon's poison type moves. We head out of the cold storage and talk to a man who has just appeared outside of it. He has a quest for me, as it turns out there is a shining Pokemon that appears in the back of the storage when everybody's gone home. So we go and check it out and it turns out to be a shiny Cryogonal. Another Pokemon I can't use, so instead I'll convert it into a like point. Like the video right now. With that out of the way, we can continue our journey and we immediately run into Vanilla, who is the champion of the Mythan region. She recognizes me immediately because she's friends with my brother Damien, who is actually a champion in the Unova region. But I haven't seen him since I was a baby, so I don't really know what he looks like. Vanilla is heading to the ancient stump and wants me to tag along. Once we arrive there, she explains that this ancient stump used to be the home of Pokemon like Celebi and Shaman, but some years ago it burned down. And after that story, she literally gives me an HM to cut down trees with. So now we're able to progress even further, but on top of that, we have a couple more Pokemon to capture, like a Cocoling, two Eevees, and a Beautifly. But not just any Beautifly, nope, it's yet another Shiny, the fourth one of this run already. With our insane luck out of the way, we have to cut down some trees, and this is one of my only complaints with this game, and that is that HMs are still required on your Pokemon, and you can't just delete them after. Most fan games and ROM hacks these days just implement the system that does that for you, but now you have to give up a moose slot, which is something I don't really like. Another complaint I have, but I'm sure will be fixed out, is that some of the following Pokemon don't have sprite yet and just appear as a question mark. With those complaints out of the way, I race to the nearest Pokemart and talk to the cleric there who has a 
special feel for me as a gift from my brother. It's a ghost electric type, which is definitely not bad, so we might end up using this in a couple of battles. I also end up buying every single evolutionary stone and giving them to my Eevee. This turned one of them into Titanion, the steel type version, and one of the most overpowered Pokemon I've ever seen, considering it has sturdy, and the other one turned into Arion, which is just a bulky special attacker, nothing really all that special, and its design is not really that intriguing to me. I was expecting something more puffy like Altaria. And that's where we're definitely not going to use it right away, since the next gym leader we'll be facing is an ice type one named Alexander. And after getting through all of his ice puzzles, we got to challenge him, and it was pretty easy. I mean, the only thing I really needed was Kobe the fiery snake with flame charges and bullet waves. Bullet wave, by the way, is a newly introduced move, a 60 base power, steel type special attack. So yeah, after turning Alexander's gym into a water type gym by melting everything, we ran outside and ran into Marcus once more. He's surprised that we've already gotten our second gym badge and wants to see how strong we've gotten. The only new additions to his team were a Grovile and a Cryogonal, and on top of that is Nutcrab Evolved too. So after giving him a good pummeling, he decides to take me back to Aviolodge Town because that's where we have to go in order to progress. We run into Team Astral again, and this time their boss seems to be with them. The two admins try to engage a battle with me, but that's when Marcus shows up and says that 3 against 1 isn't really all that fair, so he's going to jump in. Team Astral's boss says that he's not going to fight and just observe to see how strong we really are, but he already knows that Marcus is a weakling. Marcus being the proud guy that he is doesn't take this very well and is ready to team up with me to show his worth. But that's when Zero throws out his Mimikyu and throw chops Marcus, rendering him immobile for a couple of minutes so that the two admins can take me on instead. But the admins keep on throwing out bad puns at us and all of these puns take so long that Marcus is eventually able to snap out of the throw chop and battle together with us. They have a couple of weird team members like a Waylin, which is actually a sound type, that's right, sound type is also in this game, totally forgot to mention that, but I know it's a type that a lot of people have have been waiting for in the real life Pokemon games, so it's always amazing to see it in fan projects. Besides that, they also had a Katefur, Sylveon, Honedge, and Misdreavus. After defeating all of those, Xeru says that he's a very impressed by my performance and hopes to see me again very soon. Me and Marcus are pretty concerned about Team Astro right now, so we try to chase after them, but we end up getting blocked by some rocks, which we can't smash yet. Luckily, Reiko was here, which is the next gym leader in Templon Town, and he gives me the Rock Smash HM. He tells me to come and challenge him as soon as possible, so we head to Templon Town ourselves, but it doesn't seem in the best shape, with a lot of graffiti around and some abandoned houses. We also had a side quest where we we had to help out a girl that was getting harassed by a Caitlyn, so we ended up chasing it outside of her house and captured it as well. And on top of that, we also got a free choice scarf, so definitely a side quest you want to complete yourself. We ran into a corporate building, and here we meet up with a new main character, Lily. She says that we're working for her because she is the CEO of this company, who is basically funding the professor's lab. Lily here is also a formidable Pokemon trainer and is going through all the gyms just like me. Because she has heard a ton of good stories about me, she wants to know if I'm actually able to back it up. And back it up I do. I mean, I managed to take out Servine and Carbink no problem, but Milotic is definitely a big threat this early on in the game. Eventually, Snickers was able to kill it with Dragon Dances and Jet Strikes, and after that, Kira had to come out to sweep up the rest of her team with X Scissors. Once the battle is over, she tells me she's very impressed with my skills, but that she has to head out for a call, which lets us go around the city to do some extra sightseeing. And what do you do when you wanna go sightseeing? You head into the sewers. But this trip was actually very fruitful as I ran into a shiny Whirlipede. And you know what that means, time for another plug. You can follow me on that thing there, Twitter. I've been posting a lot more on there about my personal life and content related stuff. So if you want to know more about me and Zwigo, you can always go and check it out. I then head back to the city to meet up with Marcus and we destroy a crate together which leads to a very dark path. This path ends up in some kind of old ruins. We capture some interesting Pokemon like a regional ghost ground type Riolu, the fire type Zoro that we we saw earlier as well as a Waylin. So those are absolutely going to strengthen the team even more. Down in these caves also found a scripture mask which allowed me to evolve my Riolo into a Lucario immediately. And this thing is so broken. Ghost Ground is already a great typing offensive wise and its design is peak Pokemon. My Nutcrab also evolved into Coconut but you've seen that already. And we also ended up getting a Cave Fur and Scratchy evolution. While I was grinding up my new Pokemon I ran into a snake on a stick named Snick. And if you don't pay close attention, you might mistake this as a lollipop. 
I end up capturing it and evolving it into a torso sail, which just makes it go upside down. Can't wait to see its final evolution. But then, tragedy struck, as I ran into a shiny Waylon and found out that I had no Pokeballs left after capturing that stupid snail on a stick. So I had to let it go, and it got even worse after this because I found a beautiful blue shiny Zorua, and my brain just stopped functioning and I clicked Aqua Jet forgetting that it's actually a fire type and that ended up killing it. I just missed out on two beautiful shinies in five minutes. What is wrong with me? So with that heartbreak out of the way, it's time to head back to the story because me and Marcus found out that this is actually a place of operations for Team Corrupt. He thinks that they've captured his dad and that he might be in trouble. But that's when his dad actually ends up entering the room and goes on to explain that he's the leader of Team Corrupt. Marcus goes on to explain that they stole his Pokemon and his father just explains that the grunts who stole his Pokemon have been taken care of and that Monica won't be stealing anybody's Pokemon anymore. And the reason why Team Corrupt is here is because these are old catacombs and they think that all of the climate change has something to do with the dark secret that lies at the end of all this. So they go back to their research but we can't just let them go and go after them. The weird thing is that these catacombs lead to a beautiful forest area where Lily, of all people, is grinding up her Pokemon. She goes on to explain that if we follow this path further we will end up at the volcano, which is guarded by the Phoenix Pokemon that used to watch over Mythen, Penelpha. So we definitely have to watch out if we're approaching that part. We have to scratch our itch for adventure here, and we end up finding some fossils while going through the harsh volcano, the Tumble and Lava Fossil, which we will resurrect as soon as possible. Keep on following the path after that and end up at the heart of the volcano, where the legendary Phoenix Pokemon is guarding its nest. But it's also because of this Phoenix Pokemon that ash starts falling from the sky when it shouts. Just before we can approach it, Vanilla shows up and battles Vanelpha with her Deoxys and ends up capturing it as well. She will definitely be a very hard champion for me to beat. I absolutely can't wait to challenge her. Vanilla then tells us that somebody has disturbed Vanelpha and we're going to have to find out who it was and stop them. After walking through its territory, we end up finding Team Corrupt once more. And the reason why they're here is because they think that Fenelpha is the one that's causing the world to heat up. I mean, it can make ash fall from the sky, it can control the temperatures of volcanoes. They aren't wrong here. They also thank Vanilla for capturing the Fenelpha because now it's just a caged animal that can't heat up the earth anymore. But Team Corrupt isn't leaving yet because they want to blow up this volcano because they think that's going to stop the earth from warming up. I don't know where that logic comes from, but that doesn't sound good, so we're going to have to stop him. So we end up fighting Bree, and he has a really cool team with a Toxion, the poison type evolution, the regional form of Scyther again, and on top of that, a Mega Porygon Z that they ended up crafting themselves. But I did so much damage to his team by setting up Swords Dances with Titanion and eventually taking most of it out with Gear Grind and Quick Attack until eventually Stick finished off the last Pokemon Porygon Z. We end up winning and also try to convince Bree to not blow up this volcano, but he isn't having any of it, as he lashes out in a rage and disappears into nothing. With Vanilla being the champion and all, she comes to the conclusion that Team Corrupt has to be stopped. Their intentions might be good, but they're way too dangerous to be kept out on the streets, and Marcus agrees, even though it's his father. She sends us back on our gym journey and will come and find us once she's made up a plan. So for now, we're going to split up, pick up this Porygonite, and head over to the next gym to challenge the Electric-type leader, Achika, I think think that's how you pronounce it, might have just totally butchered that, but anyway, his team is a total sweep with my Lucario. Magnitude and Aura Spheres were all I needed to bury him 10 feet beneath the ground. But our stomping tantrum doesn't end there as we run into N from the Unova region on the next round. He's here to study the connections between Unova and Mythen and wants to see if the Mythen trainers are actually any good. So we will show him total defeat. He had a very weak team that just consisted of first stage Unovan Pokemon, so there was nothing special to see here at all. After I defeated this weakling, he went back to researching the region. And in the cave we just entered, we managed to find a Rakane, a poison dragon type that I I think serves as the pseudo-legendary of the Mythen region, so I immediately edited the dex total, as well as the water rock type Sokov, which reminds me a lot of a water type Rockruff. 
But our luck doesn't end here. We find a shiny gold bat as well, which means we can now twin together with Marcus. But the main thing you should take away from this is my Discord server, which you can always join if you want to chat with me or other members of the community. I then ended up running into a Psyduck that just stared into my soul for like two minutes straight and then ran <laughs> off. It's like little kids in the grocery store. My Zoroa then evolved into Zoroark, my favorite regional form by far. I mean, just look. Fire and Zoroark just works together like Pepsi and milk. We also end up running into a Combatian, which is the fighting type evolution, and I would have expected it to be a little bit more buff. We end up back in Kurmine Village where Marcus and Vanilla are already talking to Professor Bree, telling him that what he's doing is absolutely wrong. And Marcus actually ends up fleeing the scene because he doesn't want to end up in any family drama. Vanilla and Bree end up fighting in the lab, but when I enter, Vanilla has already left the scene because Bree managed to defeat her. I don't believe this man can defeat a Deoxys and a Legendary Phoenix. He must have a ton of plot armor. He might even have more plot armor than Yugi Moto. Maybe they should duel together in a shadow game. And Bree actually wants me to join his cause, because with me by their side they would be unstoppable and saving the world from climate change will become so much easier. And while I agree with his intentions, I don't agree with his actions so I'm not going to join them. And instead he's going to go off on his own to try and search for the three legendary Pokemon that used to lay watch over the Mython region a long time ago. He has managed to find an old artifact to locate these three Pokemon and we obviously can't let him capture these Pokemon. So so after he leaves, we try to follow him in his tracks and end up finding them sooner rather than later as they met up near a strange machine that they're trying to activate. But Monica isn't having anything of me. She straight up attacks me for what I did to her in the cold storage and doesn't want me to interfere with their plans anymore. I end up bulldozing over her, but she does have a very nice looking scissor and the Zoroark we have too, but honestly nothing I couldn't deal with. But I'm too late with defeating her because they already turned on the power supply to try and locate the legendary Pokemon. Just so I don't break the machine myself, Bree also enters a battle with me, but he only added a regional cleaver to his arsenal, and the rest was the same as the last time we battled. Straight after the battle, my stick evolves into Wafsty Snail, and after that the machine starts working, but I run up to it, pull a couple of levers, and turn it off. Just as Team Corrupt is about to attack me, Vanilla shows up and demands Team Corrupt to stop all of the shenanigans. We manage to scare off Team Corrupt together, and that's when Vanilla goes on to explain that she used to be friends with everybody in Team Corrupt, back when they were younger, but they've clearly taken different paths in life. But we can't keep listening to her stories, we have to keep on moving, because Team Corrupt is heading to Mount Maycrop for something, and we have to find out what. Just before we leave, we get a Mega Gym from Vanilla so that we can Mega Evolve our Lucario. That's right, you can even Mega Evolve your regional forms, so you'll just have to wait and see what it's going to look like. Only a couple of notable things happened before I reached the next city. For example, I found a bug catcher with a shiny Carablast, captured two Scythers, and got an evolution into Dracane. In the next city, there is a Mega Stone Shop, and I found out that there is now a Cradley Mega Evolution and a Miss Magius Mega Evolution. So let's hope we get to see those in the future as well. I also managed to pick up the Lucario I tier, and straight after, my Snickers evolved into Serpent Sink. I have no idea what this thing is supposed to resemble, but I'm a big fan of it. And with that, it's time to take on the Water Type Gym Leader, Wingcord. And here, my Mega Lucario immediately gets to show up. I love the ghost hands behind him and he uses those to take down Toxapex with Earthquake. My Stick Snail is able to overpower a buff Mega Swampert with Aqua Jets, and Nutcrab finishes off the last two Pokemon Vaporeon and Quagsire with Razor Leaves. This gives us the Waterfall Badge, and just as we're about to leave town, Marcus shows up and apologizes for running away back in Kurmai Village. He's still on board with taking down his father, but he just needs to become stronger so that he can actually help us out more. So we're about to test his strengths in yet another another battle. His Groval is still here, so we scorch that to a crisp, Snickers is able to extinguish Typhlosion with an Aqua Tail, and then his shiny Crobat comes out, which turns out to now have a Mega Form. And this stupid Crobat was able to take down my two snakes, because it kept on healing up with Roost and I just couldn't out damage it, so I had to bring in my Mega Lucario and ultimately take it out with Shadow Claw, and it also takes out Rufflet, Coconab, and Frostlast to win me the battle, which causes me to evolve again. This gives us a huge boost in power as we add Pithanova and 
Ampharos to the team. Pithanova, by the way, up there with the Zora Arc Fakemon design. Game Freak hasn't designed a Pokemon this cool in years. Okay, maybe Coridon. Marcus then also said that he saw Vanilla heading to Repulse Town and that we should probably go and meet up with her there. It's a beautiful town by the beach. Do you know that feeling when you enter that one house in Andela Town in Pokemon Black and White 2? Well, the same happens here. Cynthia is waiting for you, ready to clap your cheeks. And on top of that, she's also the mother of Vanilla. So why isn't she just helping out with Team Corrupt? Well, that's because she's on vacation, and on her vacation, the only thing she wants to do is battle me with her backup team. Because it's just a backup team, this battle really serves no purpose other than showing off this beautiful new Volcarona form. I feel like it could actually be a mythical or legendary Pokemon with this design. Sadly enough, we're going to have to eat Cynthia out of here and go to the pier because all of our friends have basically met up there for a meeting. We go over what Team Corrupt is actually after, and they want to capture Fenwar, Ligury, and Frenite, which are the three Pokemon that looked over the region a long time ago, and as it turns out, just like Dialga, they can control time. To see if everybody's strong enough for a mission like this, Vanilla wants us to team up together and battle against each other. So I decide to team up with Ivy and battle Lily and Marcus. Ivy had a Meloetta on our team, which did most of the work, and granted me a win with me basically doing nothing. After showing Vanilla what we're worth, she decides to split us up in a couple of groups. She and Ivy will go to the Shrine of Day and guard Ligury. Marcus, me, and Lily have to head north to Mount Maycrop. There's another shrine there and we have to make sure Bree doesn't see us if he shows up there. Because if he is there, we have to call for help and make sure Vanilla comes. So we head over to the Shrine of Night and guess what? Bree's already here, so we give Vanilla a call and she's on her way. But in order to buy her some time, we distract Bree, but he isn't having any of it and attacks us with his Genesect. Luckily, Vanilla arrives just in time and blocks the attack with her Deoxys, but she gets overpowered by Genesect and a Techno Blast shoots her away. So so we end up jumping in ourselves and battling Bree. I ended up defeating his Azumarill with Ampharos' Thunderbolts, scalding away his Cleavor with Peggy's Scalds, and on top of that she had a gorgeous Mega Jiraji. But I made a wish to that Jiraji that I could just scorch it with Kobe's Flamethrower, so that's what happened. Porygon Z and Toxion got killed by Fire Blast and Earthquake respectively, and Lucario and Snickers dealt with Genesect. And when the battle's over, something terrible happens, a blizzard starts surrounding the area, and if we all stay here, there's a possibility we'll all end up dead. So Team Corrupt flees the area, but we black out and wake up back in a bed with our mom next to us. She was super afraid that we're not going to make it, but Vanilla was able to get us out of that blizzard and get us to safety. She also ends up entering the room and says that the only reason she was able to survive that Genesect Blast is because of her Deoxys, and that we don't have to worry about Team Corrupt for the time being, and should just focus on our gym challenge so that we can rest up. So once we were feeling better, I went to the local museum and and resurrected both of my fossils to get a boulder and a Lorena, a rock dragon type and a fire dragon type. I go back to Kurmine Village and end up running into Hope on the route just next to it. She gives me the HM for Surf, which is going to allow me to traverse a lot more parts of the region. So that's exactly what I do. I surf around in search of Temple on Town, but end up running into that same Psyduck again and have the most intense staring battle ever. The Psyduck flees, which means that I end up winning. As we arrive in Temple on Town, we see that Vanilla and Hope are here as well, and they ask me to come to the library so that we can discuss our next game plan. But before we go there, we do a ton of evolutions. We get our fossil Pokemon's final forms, which look pretty cool, although one of them seems pretty cursed. But that's not all. We get so many more final forms. I'm talking Binchy, Walrein, Pidgeot, Coco Fested, Magnadove, Fawny, and Rekolossus. The Green Hound Doom with Wings. We finally gather together in the library, but there is some really bad news. Team Corrupt has already captured two of the Guardians and is planning to assist slave all of them in a secret underground laboratory somewhere. Hope ends up finding a book with all of the lore that surrounds the three guardians. As it turns out, they produce crystals, and with these crystals, you can actually summon Arceus. So if Team Corrupt manages to get their hands on the god of Pokemon itself, we're all going to be doomed. But they still need to capture one of those legendary beasts. So we're going to try and intercept them with all of the strongest trainers in the region at the last shrine on Route 5. 
and the strongest trainers of all time seem to just be the three of us because we end up going to the shrine but we're already too late team corrupt is in the process of capturing that last beast so me and hope end up fighting the two commanders of team corrupt while vanilla takes down brie the only thing i did in this battle was just set up a belly drum with titanion and then sweep through everything together with hope's road on Vanilla ended up losing against Bree once again, I don't even know how she became the champion, and while they're squabbling, Bree says to me that he's had enough. He's ready to get me out of the way because he doesn't want me to interfere anymore. And that's when we battle him again. I end up basically one-shotting his entire team with Earthquakes and Shadow Claws from Mega Lucario, and while I did add a regional form of Volcarona to the team, the rest of the team basically stayed the same since the last time we battled him. He then just says that he already has the three Pokemon captured and will send them to their secret laboratory in order to summon Arceus. And with the Master Ball that he has acquired, Arceus is going to have to bow down to him, whether he wants it or not. Just before he leaves, he fires his two admins, telling them to never come back to Team Corrupt, and then they all leave. Vanilla starts doubting herself because she might not be able to protect the region as a champion because she keeps on losing, but Hope is able to smack some sense into her because she thinks that we'll somehow find a way to stop Team Corrupt's plans. We're going to go back to Templon Town and take on the gym, but before we do that, we also get a Master Ball and the Mythic Crystal, which I think we can use to evolve a certain Pokemon. Head back to town, and just when I'm about to enter the gym, Ivy steps out, and she's just gotten her next badge, but ever since losing to me, she's not been the same. And she needs to know if she's become any stronger. So let's see if she did. Her notable Pokemon were a Mega Venusaur and a new form of Meloetta, but Titanion just did what Titanion does best, Belly Drum and Extreme Speed. I don't think she feels like a better trainer after getting swept by only one of my Pokemon, but it was pretty cool to see that Meloetta form and I hope I can get one myself. We end up going into the gym and this is a weird gym puzzle, you just have to remember the path that shows up in front of you for a few seconds and if you miss just one step you will be put back to the beginning of the room. Because my brain is so big I remembered it first time every time, that's a lie, but I did eventually reach the gym leader. His name is Reiko and he specializes in ground types and we'll be facing him in a double battle. We end up getting our very first look at Mega Cradily in this battle and I don't want to get eaten by this prehistoric flower. His other team members consisted of a Seismitoad, Nidoking, Tyranitar, Excadrill and his ace Garchomp. Stick and Snickers were actually doing most of the work with Aqua Tails and Hydro Pumps, while Mega Lucario eventually just finished off the last two Pokemon with Earthquake. Now we have a shiny new gym badge to show off, which we actually immediately do because we see all of our friends together. Vanilla managed to find a phone that was connected to Bree, but just when we're about to find out what's actually in the phone, we get contacted by the three legendary beasts. Our mind goes blank for a while and Hope is very concerned about us. We go on to explain what happened, and Hope says that the Guardians only contact the person that they think is the strongest Pokemon trainer in the region. So hey, we must be something special. That's when everybody decides to give me the day, night, and evening shards. They don't really know what they do, but they're definitely linked to the Guardians, so I should probably hold on to it tightly. They also decide to give me the lost phone, and if I get any messages regarding Bree, I should let everybody know. But for now, we're going to head over to Sunside Village because we have another gym to take on. On my way there, I I ran into a fisherman with three shiny Pokemon, a Sea King, Quagsire, and Gyarados. He must have done quite a lot of chain hunting back in Pokemon X and Y. Shortly after we arrive in Sunside Village, and just before the gym we have another battle with one of our friends. This time it's Hope. And somehow she has a Lunala on her team, as well as a shiny Absol, a Rodom Heat, as well as a Raculosus, and a Planeon, the normal type evolution. I just know that all of you Eevee lovers are going to love this thing. It ended up being a close battle with only my Titanion and Stick Snail surviving. But in the end, we come on victorious, and now she finally sees why the Guardians chose me as the strongest trainer in the region. She's going to get out of my hair so I can get this next gym battle done. This gym leader's name is Yeri, and he specializes in the new sound type. He started out with a beautiful new form of Lapras that's electric sound. The only thing we needed to wash it away was Surf's. I guess it should have just get his water typing. For the rest of the team, I once again used Belly Drum on Titanion and just swept, but there were a couple of very cool team members here, like the new evolution Sonarian that looks like a bat, and speaking of bats, Noivern also has a regional form that looks like an ice type, but I'm guessing it might be ice sound. After taking down his last Pokemon, we have officially acquired six gym badges, but we're a long way from being ready. As we go to the next round, we meet up with Ivy there, and she is accusing me of killing Lily. 
Do you remember back at the shrine where that blizzard almost killed me? Well, as it turns out, when Lily was blasted by Genesect's attack, she was left behind there and ended up passing away. We had no idea and we even had the chance to help her. So Ivy feels a lot of anger towards me and says that I only care about the fame. That's obviously not true because I would have obviously helped her if I knew these were the consequences. That doesn't matter to her, her rage lies deep and she wants to take it out on me, which I obviously understand. She added in a Diancy to our team, which was her first Pokemon, but since we have a couple of great water types on our side, Mythical Diamond erodes away faster than Thanos can snap his fingers. The rest of his team mostly got taken care of by Snickers, Titanion, and Mega Lucario, as I didn't really get a lot of pushback from her Pokemon. The battle ends in agony as she starts crying and says that she never wants to see me again and that I should be locked up for life. I can't be mad at her. I understand her feelings, but it's not all my fault. I was just trying to do the right thing, and I honestly hope she'll eventually be open to talk about it. For now, we're going to have to leave her alone and head to Diamond Town because Vanilla has managed to track down Team Corrupt, and she takes me to the Diamond in to talk about it. We have to head into the desert resort to try and ambush them because that's where they're going to meet up. But she's also gathered some very strong trainers from different regions, including the champion of Unova, Damien, who is my brother. I haven't seen him in over 10 years. I don't think this reunion could be any more perfect. Taking down the evil team together with my bro, they stand no chance. Don't have time to catch up right now because we get introduced to the other trainer in the room, Mizzy. He used to be the former champion before Vanilla defeated him and he's excited to help us out so after gearing up we head outside and head to the desert resort but nobody seems to be here even though his phone said that they would meet up in the desert resort but that's when we hear a familiar voice and all of a sudden Marcus teleports out of nothing with the three legendary birds behind him he's been a double agent for team corrupt all this time pretending to be our friend to just get all of the information out of us he purposely left that phone behind so that he could ambush us here and we had no idea idea. That's when Bree and another admin teleport into the scene and surround us. So we all split up to take each and every one of our opponents on together and I'll be fighting my longtime friend Marcus. And he doesn't only have the legendary birds, he also has the creation trio Dialga, Palki and Giratina. The god of space and time do go down easily with sand waves and Giratina eventually gets squashed by Dragon Rush. Mega Lucario was able to deal with Zapdos and Articuno before getting burned by Moltres. I set out Kobe and together with Masharna, we were able to overpower Marcus. He throws out the creation trio and summons Arceus. He has gone through so much to acquire this Pokemon and he immediately uses its power to teleport away all of my friends except for me because he wants me to battle it and suffer its wrath firsthand. But little did he know that all we needed to take down Arceus was a Surf, an Aura Sphere, and an Extreme Speed. If only God was really invincible, then he might have won this fight. Marcus seems to take this loss very well, like suspiciously well. He thanks me for defeating him, and for all of the friendship I gave him, he's also going to release Arceus and the Creation Trio. And on top of that, he also gives me the key to their lab, which is hidden behind the Arceus statue in Maycrop. I feel like all of this could still be some kind of setup but we're still going to go down there because we basically have no other choice. So after everybody leaves we get the opportunity to go there. On our way we run into a ground type evolution called Dunion but he's just very bulky in both defense and special defense so we won't be using him all that much. I just wanted to show him off. We arrive at the Arceus statue and end up pulling a lever which opens up a secret entrance. Down in the hideout we see that all of our friends are locked up in cages so we set all of them free and talk about what happened. They thank me for saving all of their lives and Vanilla even ends up giving me a spirit tomb which belonged to her mother Cynthia. Marcus ends up showing up too and tells us to come to the bottom of the lab with him to ensure that this isn't a trap. He shows me that he doesn't have any pokeballs or weapons on him and the reason why he didn't turn himself in is because he wanted to show us the secret otherwise we might have never found out. As we head to the basement, we see that he has trapped the three legendary guardians inside of these tubes, and he's been trying to keep time stable, but he fears that things might get out of hand if they stay in here any longer. They managed to trap them in here with crystals that they found at the pieces of their shrines, because these Pokemon keep searching for their crystals no matter what, and so they ended up walking right into Team Corrupt's trap. So they also kept them asleep with toxic gas so that they couldn't try to escape. The explanation out of the way 
we get to set all of them free, and that's when Marcus says his goodbyes as Vanilla is about to take him into the police station. With that, the region is saved so we can leave this lab and head back to Diamond Town to challenge the 7th gym leader, Mari, who specializes in fighting type Pokemon. She had a Cobalion and a Mega Lucario, so her team was no pushover at all. As two of my Pokemon even bit the dust, in the end, Lucario was able to take down four of hers with Earthquakes and Shadow Claws, and after getting the Brute Badge, she tells me to go outside because she has a ton of information for me. She wants me to meet up with her at Receiver Dock, which is just through the gate behind her. She wants me to take a boat with her to her home island because something weird's happening there. But I bet it's not as weird as me surfing on land. We then end up arriving in Reservoir Village. Just before we enter her house, we see N standing in front of the Pokemon Center. He's had a ton of fun exploring the region and asks if I've been collecting badges. So I show him the seven that I've already collected and that makes him want to fight me to see how strong we've really gotten. He has his regular black and white champion team, Thresharam instead of Zekrom. Snickers was able to sweep through most of it with a Dragon Dance boosted Aqua Tail and Dual Chop combo, and once he's defeated, he thanks me for showing him how good Mythen trainers can really become. We go in to enter Mari's house, and she says that Team Astra is actually attacking this village and they're not being very nice to any of its residents. It's all because Zeru is trying to find the perfect spot for his new base, so she wants us to find them and put a stop to their antics, but first she takes us outside into a hidden grotto, because the Swords of Justice have arrived in this region too, and she wants me to either capture or defeat them. So I take out Verizion, and once we're done there, we head back to her house, and her daughter, which is Ivy, comes barging in, and asks why I'm here. Her mother says that she needed my help because of all the good that I've done for the region, and that Team Astra has been lurking around the town. Before we go and look for Team Astra though, Ivy wants to battle me, and once we head outside, she ends up apologizing for how she acted earlier, she didn't really see that I didn't do it on purpose and was just overwhelmed with emotions. But that doesn't mean she's going to let me off the hook, because she still wants to see if she can manage to beat me. And the answer to that is definitely no. She can beat me. She's not the main character around here. Once the battle's over, Ivy thanks me once again for saving the region and her life and gives me one last final goodbye. Now it's time to find Team Astra, but before we do, we run into N again and he's found a shrine which you can use to summon the three legendary Time Guardians. So I place all three of my crystals in the slots and then they show up, so I step up to them, but two of them disappear and start roaming the region so I can go and capture them whenever I want. The only one that stayed was Fenroar and I ended up using my Master Ball on him. It turns out to be a ground ghost type, and it looks kind of like a Frankenstein monster with a ton of things put together, and I actually like it quite a lot. We end up saying goodbye to N as he's heading back to the Innova region, but he thanks me for saving this region and hopes we can one day become champions ourselves. We get a call from Vanilla to come to a nearby cave because Team Astra has been spotted here. So we meet up with her and Mari in front of the cave. Vanilla goes on to explain that Zeru actually turned out to be her former mentor. Tour. But when he was champion, she challenged his league and ended up losing. On top of that, he stole all of her Pokemon except for Eevee, so she's got some beef to settle with him. So before they're even able to establish a base, we have to try and stop them in their tracks. So we barge in together, but we end up separated and I run into Marcus down here? I thought he was in jail. Somehow he managed to escape, and the only thing he still wanted to do before he was going to atone for his sins was take down Zeru. But his two admins, Pixie and Spectral, end up entering the room and they try to stop us. Once again, I'm not going to show this fight except for the Mega Sylveon and Mega Miss Magius. These two look absolutely astonishing. I mean, Sylveon looks like a superhero and Miss Magius looks like it's going to swallow you with its space hat. We managed to defeat them, but Marcus is nowhere to be seen anymore. He's headed further into the cave to look for Zero to try and defeat him. We end up running into them and they're having a little squabble with Zero looking down on Marcus a lot despite him growing and becoming a way stronger trainer in the process, even managing to capture Arceus. But the former champion isn't having any of his small talk. He keeps breaking him down like he's the weakest opponent he has ever seen. Marcus ends up noticing me, and that's when Zeru's attention shifts to me instead. He says that this has been destiny all this time, and that we were supposed to fight each other from the very beginning. He goes on to ask if every single trainer we've faced so far just feels like clay that we can crush. 
And honestly, it's kind of been true. We have been bulldozing through everyone without really getting a challenge. And he explains that he was the same way for his entire life. The only real injuries or losses that he suffered were on the hands of his own Pokemon. And then he goes on to point at his eye, which he has lost because he stepped in front of two powerful Dragon-type Pokemon that were fighting. And he would do it every time to show his admiration and love for his Pokemon. He goes on to give another long dialogue about power and about how he's the strongest and how Marcus doesn't even deserve to challenge him. So we're going to shut up Zeru because his constant rambling is starting to annoy me. Frank immediately starts off guns blazing, taking out his Mimikyu with two shadow punches. We end up going Serpent Sink against Serpent Sink in the next matchup and we outspeed with Outrage and kill it just like the next Pokemon Gengar. His Mega Rayquaza Ace comes in, so we use a quick extreme speed before biting the dust so that Kobe can come in and finish it off with two Draco Meteors. Once Dragapult comes in, I bring in Titanion, Belly Drum, and Gear Grind, and the last Pokemon we face is Ascentian, the Dragon-type evolution, who gets downed by an extreme speed. Zeru actually takes his defeat very well, which I would not have imagined. During our fighting, he actually took away Marcus and locked him in the basement, so he gives me the key so we can go and free him, and also tells me that we should go to his home region and challenge him once we become champion here, because he'll definitely be getting stronger himself. We ended up going to the basement and unlocking Marcus's cage so that he can be free and he doesn't want to become Pokemon champion himself no more and will instead be rooting for us. That's where we part ways and as we go outside we meet up with Vanilla and Mari again. They have no idea how we managed to overpower Zeru because he was so strong that he overpowered the both of them and just dropped them off out of the cave. So they're super surprised that we managed to get out unscathed. After that they go on to encourage me to get my final gym badge and become champion as fast as as possible because vanilla would love to challenge me so no more time wasting we head to the next gym but once you enter the gym there's a time limit you have to complete the maze before the time runs out if you don't you have to get back to the beginning because my maze solving skills are on par with my battling skills which honestly aren't even that high i managed to get through it just fine and in the dark depths of this building we find the gym leader bola and fittingly her specialization is also dark she didn't have any new pokemon on her team but it was still very well built with a spirit to Mega Hound Doom, Crocodile, and Bisharp thrown in there. All I really had to do to take her down was show the tail of my Snickers, put some water on it, and smack her around a couple of times. With our last gym badge in hand, we were headed up to the Pokemon League and Victory Road, but we end up running into Ivy again. She wants to wish me luck and thank me for everything one last time before I take on the ultimate challenge. On top of that, she gives me the special item to change Meloetta into that cool new form. We say our final goodbyes and end up running into that Psyduck again, but this time we grab it and it turns out to be a ditto. I guess you can capture this thing if you want to do some breathing, but that's not really something I'm interested in, so I just blasted it. Just before we enter the next town, we run into Hope as well, but she wants to reach the Pokemon League before we do, so she can try to beat the Elite Four and Champion, so I guess we're going to have to make this a race. In order to slow her down, I beat her up in a Pokemon battle, so she has to pass by a Pokemon Center, but we get sidetracked quite a lot straight after, as we end up running into the legendary Terrakion, and we also find the legendary Roamers, Ligury, and Free Knight. And since we actually got one more Master Ball remaining, I decide to capture Free Knight, which turns out to be a Dark Steel type. And we'll immediately add him to the team for the final few battles of this run. We finally reach the Pokemon League after a rough path through Victory Road. We waste no more time, head straight inside, and challenge the first Elite Four member, Magzim, with his Steel type team. The first couple of turns go great as we manage to take out his Golurk with an Aquatail from Snickers and do a ton of damage against the incoming Shiny, Empoleon, and Corviknight with Thunders from Pluto. On top of that, Empoleon also has a new Shiny, which I love so much more than the regular one. I bring in Mega Lucario and take both of their team members down, so they bring in Zamazenta and Zacian, who have no mercy as they one-shot both of my team members, so I'm forced to bring out my Water Dog and Fire Snake. Zacian immediately gets drowned out by his Steam Eruption, and then he brings out his last Pokemon Pokemon Shiny Volcarona. They managed to take both of my team members down, so Titanian and Snickers are the final things I can use to win this matchup. Two extreme speeds, Zamazenta is no more, Volcarona takes out 
Snickers, and we can finish off Volcarona with a couple more gear grinds. With that, we can move on to the second Elite Four member, Luna, who is actually the sister of Vanilla. So why didn't she come and help out with all of the problems? I don't know. But it certainly seems like everyone in the game has this Volcarona. I end up taking it down with Lucario while it also takes me down in the same turn, and her Mega Ampharos then comes in. Pluto's Hydro Pumps fill it up with water and make it fly off into the distance. He's also able to deal with my Lodic and land another Thunder on Azumaro, and then it's Titanium time. You know what that means. Belly Drum, Extreme Speed, win. Then we go into the third Elite Four member's chamber, and it turns out to be Hope? Everything was a ruse, she was an Elite Four member all this time? I'm going to crush her for deceiving me like that. She should definitely count herself lucky that I'm her friend. I end off starting off with Mega Lucario, and vacuum clean away the first four Pokemon until Lunala comes out, who's able to survive a Shadow Claw, and end my Lucario's Reign of Terror. We finish it off with Pluto, and Peggy ends up drowning out her kitchen appliance road off. Now we can move on to the final Elite Four member, Lucas, and he specializes in shiny Pokemon? That's really cool. And he's definitely got a couple of beauties on his team. As he leads off with a shiny Mawile, which I can just one-shot with Mega Lucario's Earthquake, I also hit one more Shadow Claw on his shiny Giratina. Definitely one of the best-looking shinies out of any Legendary. And then I end up killing the Lord of the Distortion World with Outrage from Snickers, as well as Lapras, and the second-to-last matchup with his Marshadow ends up turning out into a draw. But you're never going to believe what his final Pokemon is. A Mega Arcanine that's blue and it looks like a cloud and I love it and I need it in my life. But despite being blue, it can survive a single water type attack from Peggy, meaning that Lucas is defeated, so we enter the champion room to challenge Vanilla. This is the moment we've both been waiting for for a long time. Ever since the start that we met each other, we knew that one day we would end up against each other in battle. And today that day has finally come. Now let's show her what a real champion looks like. She leads off with her trusty pal Ascension, the Pokemon that she's had for her entire time as a Pokemon. Pokemon trainer, and I just go ahead and destroy it with a single outrage, which is kind of funny. She also somehow managed to get her hands on a shiny Lugia, she must have done a lot of resetting for that, but I also end up taking that out with two outrages. I hit myself in my confusion on the next Pokemon Deoxys, so I get destroyed by a Draco Meteor, but it was absolutely nothing Hades couldn't deal with with a Shadow Claw. We then finally get to see Fenelfa's sprite, and it looks so cute, but still menacing at the same time. It definitely reminds me of a fusion between Moltres and Oh oh, and that's a good thing. We end up one-shotting it with a steam eruption. She also revived her Ascension, so we take that out too. And the last two Pokemon, Blaze Hide and beautiful gold shiny Mega Altaria, felt the extreme speeds and gear grinds from Titanion. With that, we have just become champion of the Mythen region, and Vanilla already knew that this was going to be the case, so she brings me to the Hall of Fame with proudness and registers me as the most powerful trainer of the region. But this this isn't where our journey ends yet, there is one more person I want to see. So I head back home to tell my mom the good news, but there is also a surprise guest here. My brother has decided to stay in this region for a little while, and after all of these years, he finally wants to battle me. Him as a champion of Unova, me as a champion of Mythen, this is going to be the perfect clash. So get ready for the battle of a lifetime. He leads off with his starter Samurott, and with just a single outrage, it basically doesn't exist anymore. Just like everybody around, he also has the Volcarona, so we Shadow Glide with Lucario. His Keldeo also faces my Lucario and ends up losing, because instead of just using a water type move, it decided to toxic me. His High Dragon somehow survives the close combat and ends up taking me out, but the Life Orb damage is also fatal to him. He brings in Milligant and also revive his Samurott, so I just bring in Snickers and kill his last two Pokemon with Outrage, then he has a surprise for me, a Reshiram. That's really weird to see because N already had a Reshiram. Anyway, just one more Outrage and our brother is defeated. As a champion, he really didn't have the most awesomest team, but it was definitely fun battling my brother after all these years. He is going to head back to his home region, so maybe we could one day visit him over there again. But for now, we're going to end off Pokemon Myth because this video is almost an hour long. I'm going to put it out there, this might actually be the best fan game that it released in 2023. There's only a couple of things 
things that I would personally change about it. That's the HM system, but also gives people the opportunity to grind at every single Pokemon Center, so you don't have to spend hours in grass. I would also love to see the deck snap of Radical Red make a return in this game. But besides that, this was a 10 out of 10 experience. The story was actually really good for a fan game, and pulled me in more and more as further as you got into the game. I know there's an entire post game as well, so we might check that out in a later video if you guys are loving this one. But for now, we're going to end off this video, so make sure to download Pokemon Myth yourself. The link to their Discord will be in the description. And with all of that out of the way, I also want to thank my membership and Patreon supporters for supporting the channel. If you'd want to do so yourself, you can always do that by clicking the link in the description. And as always, people, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. I'm Zwigo, and I'll see you guys next time.